when I first heard what? About Space 1999, what was your reaction? Your first thought? Well, you know, I, uh, Jerry Anderson and a bunch of other suits came to my house in Los Angeles and asked me to do the series. It was after Star Trek had been canceled and before Star Wars. And I really felt that space and science fiction was a wonderful platform to say things that you couldn't say in contemporary stuff, political stuff and ideas and all kinds of things. I had read and, and knew Ray Bradbury well and, and Isaac Asimov, I read him. You know, I wasn't, you know, a fiend about science fiction, but I, I liked it, and I felt that it was a great platform in which to say pertinent things without offending anybody. Uh, because if you're doing the streets of San Francisco, you can't really say things you feel deeply, politically, because you're gonna, half the country's gonna be against you in 10 minutes, but I witness this election we are having at the moment. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm not, not watching Saturday Night Live all the time. <laughs> Tell the difference between the two, I'm not sure. <laughs> so, so uh, anyway, I like the premise, and it was a good time for us. We left Mission Impossible, and in an odd way, we had been blacklisted a little bit because Paramount lied about why we left Mission Impossible and some of that stuff, and, and the trade papers were printing lies about us, saying we were difficult and stuff which we weren't. Um, and uh, we were having trouble getting decent employment. So we went to London. London bridges falling down. I mean, uh, and, uh, we did space and, and, and had a great time and, and raised our kids there. They went to English schools and it was good for us and time to get away from Hollywood for a little while. And uh, that's a long answer. It's the German standing up. Yeah, uh, Martin, I recently found out that you originally started out as a cartoonist uh, for the Daily News. Uh, and uh, when did you decide that, that cartooning, cartooning wasn't going to be your line of work? Well, I'll tell you. You know, I did start as an artist, studied fine arts at Pratt Institute, went to the Art Student League, took classes, and, and I could paint and draw pretty well. I was hired uh, by the news when I was still in high school. I lied about my age. I told them I was 18. I was only 17. I would do my high school homework on the train. I, I worked from, I left James Madison High School in Brooklyn at three o'clock, got to the news building at four and worked till midnight and did my, I, 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 it was insane actually. Um, and uh, there was a, a fellow called Horace Knight who was doing the theatrical caricatures. I was illustrating Billy Rose's column pitching horseshoes. I was only 17, 18 years old, but I could draw, and I, 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 I drew, even in Billy Rose's column, I drew caricatures of Red Skelton, Fred Astaire, Judy Garland, Billy Rose. Uh, anyway, a guy called Horace Knight, who was an older fellow, now I think of him as a kid, uh, he was leaving the news to retire. And they started grooming me to become the that theatrical caricaturist. Now the only other caricaturist in town was Hirschfeld of the New York Times. But the Daily News in those days had three times the circulation of the New York Times. I mean, it was huge. We were the biggest newspaper in America in terms of readership. About five to six million people daily and about 10 million people on Sundays. And that's a lot of people for a publication. Anyway, when I found out I was going to be the new, new theatrical caricaturist, most people would have jumped up and down with glee. 
and I didn't. I said, I said oh God, doom. And I knew if I got that job, I'd never quit. So I quit. To this day, I can hear my mother saying, you did what? Because <laughs> I didn't ask anybody, I just did it. And I joined the ranks of lots of out of work New York actors. I went away to summer stock without any training to speak of. Did 12 shows in 13 weeks. I sang, I danced, I played the Bob Hope role in Roberta. I did, I, I, I mean, I, I had a lot of white shoe polish in my hair. Uh, I came back and started to study seriously and uh, worked with Kirk Conway, who was married to an obscure actress at that time called Kim Stanley, who became a huge Broadway actress and Geraldine Page and those people. And then I auditioned for the Actors Studio to, because that was the place to be, to work with Strasburg and Kazan and those people. And uh, that year, 2,000 people auditioned and two of us were accepted, Steve McQueen and I. Wow. Wow. Uh, which was, you know, I knew Steve. At the time, I, I didn't think of it as being that special, but I, in retrospect, it's like, 2,000 people, and two people accepted? Wow, you know, that's me now saying that. At the time, I was stupid. <laughs> but ask her some questions. <laughs> no, actually, I have one. Uh, uh, Vampira, the role you played in it, what, um, what was involved with the research that you did you do any research for that character, trying to get to that character, or did you just watch as much video as you could of what she did? I did. I watched a lot of video and uh, read about her, and I was lucky enough to meet her and spend some time with her and um, ask her about what she did to create the character. She was inspired by Charles Adams, and she would tell me things that she did to get her waist down to 16 inches. Like she'd wrap it in like uh, rubber and put papaya powder on it. And um, so I trained for months before actually doing that um, role. For about three months I trained in corsets because I, I wanted my waist to be really small like hers. And, and uh, just get her, embody her essence.